Hello and welcome to part 6 of creating custom content management systems using PHP and MySQL. In this lesson series we're learning how to create just ba very basic systems that you can give to your clients, your friends, your family, your dog, or your cat, or a little hamster. And they can manage the page content if they don't know HTML, if they're stupid. And very quickly before we resume production of our system I want to show you guys where the playlist is. It's right on my channel. So if you're watching this video at YouTube, you can click my little picture there. It'll take you to my channel. And on my channel, there's the playlist right there. How to build custom CMS. And you click that, and there's all the videos in that playlist. Isn't that groovy? And part six will be in there when I get finished with it. And then when I finish with the whole system, I'm going to release the source code so you can get to it if you'd like to see it or you can just build with me as I go. Okay, when we last left off in part 5, we were creating the admin center, the root or the directory that the person who's administering the site goes to to edit pages and make pages. So if we go to that directory, we navigate there, and we're not logged in as the administrator, it gives us a message of only the administrator can, administrator can view this directory. Click here to head back to the home page. So what I'm going to do is to make life easy and keep things good and simple but yet workable right here under this uh, title line we're gonna place a little form that says please log in as administrator and then once they log in using a username and password then we're gonna let them see the actual root directory so let's make that little form now okay here we are in Dreamweaver and all we have to do is I'm gonna go into design view and I'm just going to pl place the form in using design view. I'm going to use a table. Everybody yells at me for using my tables, but I'm hooked on tables. I know it's no good for search engine optimization, but I really don't care. I really don't care. I love my tables. Okay, so let's go to, let's highlight the table. Let's make it maybe, I don't know, 500 wide. 500 pixels that is not percent not even that much maybe 300 very small there we go 340 that's great okay now I'm going to make a two columns table with three rows actually let's make it four rows there we go. Now I'm going to merge those selected cells. I'm going to merge those selected cells. And on top, I'm going to write, please log in here. We can move this over and just type in username and password. Alrighty, now let's go into the code view, and there we have a table sitting above our PHP. We're going to move that in a second to put it in the PHP output where it needs to go. So what I'm going to do is place a form in here, in the table, so it will have a field here for username, a field here for password, and then a button here to submit. Okay, so in the code view I've started my form tag here right when the table opens right after the table opens so everything nests correctly you can nest a form into a table using this method and uh, so right when the table tag opens you put in the form tag the opening form tag and then right before the table closes you put in the closing form tag and it will nest correctly so let's go into design view and now we can just place uh, first let me talk about the the forms opening tag we have action form action admin check PHP so what that means is when the submit button is pressed this form will go to this page you can also use the PHP server variables to access self if you'd like or this method works too but the uh, the page will parse on its on itself so we're gonna put PHP within this page a little more PHP to do the logging in. 
and the checking to see if the username and password is correct. So all this means is if the form is submit button is pressed this page is going to be accessed again so we can parse the form. Method is post so we'll gather posted variables from it and the target is self. Now let's place in the design view let's place in the fields go to forms or you can just go to insert form text area text field we want text field OK and then in the code view you can see the input type is text name is username let's change that to username what we want it to be IDs username and now we can just take that and copy it control C and put it here for the password field just name this password and it is a text type of input. Okay, now let's look at the design, see what we have. That's great. You can also style these form fields by adding inline styling. If you go to style and let's place the width at about 98% Do that to the other one too. That way it'll it'll fill your your table column just about completely. There we go. Username and password. Let's move this over a little bit. Put colons there. It's great. Now let's put a submit button. Insert form button. Okay. Submit. That's good. Value. That's great. Name is button. That's good. Code view. Let's check it out. Input type submit. Name button. ID button. Value is submit. And really all that's going to do is make the form parse. Activate it. Send the information. So these values we have set are good. Now, since this form is going to be, let's snatch this up out of here. Control X Let's make sure we have it the way it the way we want it to look. Actually, let's center this column. And let's make this log in now. Now we have everything we need. That's great. Control X. And I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, let's see. Right here under that tag, let's press Let's just put it right there. Control V. See that? Now the PHP will output that. Now let's place that up in the server and see what we got. Okay, so now if we're at the site, we try to go to the admin admin center. Now we have a form there. So all we have to do now is when they press log in, is make sure the appropriate fields are filled in and they have the appropriate data. And then they'll be logged in as administrator and we show them the page that's the index for the admin center and that will allow them to create pages and edit existing pages okay so right in the first section of this PHP script I'm going to right after the PHP block starts I'm going to push down a few lines by pressing enter there and make sure that this if statement is the second thing to run on the page first thing to run on the page is going to be an if condition to see if that form is posted to so basically if the form is not posted they're going to see this second if statement if they happen to not be logged in and if they happen to see this information and then they use the little form here and press submit then we're going to run this top if statement but if they don't press submit they don't see this form or they don't fill out the form and press submit this top section will not run okay now I've got the little script written that we'll do the checking to see if their admin information is correct now what we'll do in the first line is you'll see we have two different PHP blocks now the one we started with to check admin session is registered and it has a value of the admin name now we have a new PHP block in admin check.php that does the checking to see 
if that form is uh, has values and is submitted. And I change this from input type text to input type password. Now, in the form, when it's pressed, let's see, let's go to the page. Let's go try to go to the admin center. We're not logged in. It says only the admin can view this directory. Please log in. So let's say I just press log in now. You'll see that nothing happens because I was a wise guy and I didn't put any information in. Nothing should happen. Press log in now. Nothing happens. Now if I put a username of whatever crap and I press log in now, it says your login information is incorrect. But if I was to happen to put the correct username and the correct password, which is what you give to client, press login now, let's see what happens. The Terminator and Gubernuts, that's the password. Press login now, and there it is. There's the admin control panel, and it's only accessible if the administrator is logged in with the correct information. Now let's look at that parsing file. Let me explain it to you. At the admin check.php, the first block up top now is checking to see. First, we um, in line two here we create or initialize a variable of error message because we're going to use that error message. Remember that red text that showed up and said you're missing information or your information is not correct. That error message is going to show up, so we have to initialize that variable because it's being output to the page. Now and I output it here in the form. See? Error message right there. If there's no error message that comes up, they won't even see that. But if there happens to be one, it goes right there. And you can see I make the font color red. Your, inf your login information is incorrect. But let's go through this line by line. So here we initialize that error message variable. So we can use it below. Then we have an if condition here. And here is where it closes. So if condition opens here, line 3, closes line 21. And this is just very basic. Um, most of the time you would use MySQL to get this into uh, the preferred format. But just for this example, and I have MySQL uh, functionality for this kind of thing in uh, the Web Intersect series. You can take the Web Intersect series to learn how to create official logins using MySQL where the data is stored in the database for the admin here we're just using hard-coded variables right there alright so here's the if statement that opens up and it's saying if post username so I did that because if they don't happen to put a value in the username field I just don't want anything to happen like I said they're a wise guy that didn't put anything in they press submit so they shouldn't see anything now if they put variables in it's going to if they put values in it's going to parse this so what happens is we create local PHP variables from the posted variables in the fields in the form. Here we access those fields and here we place them into local variables. Now we take we create our <coughs> simple hard-coded values to check the and I just made the name the admin name terminator and the password is gubernuts. So you have to type in terminator the terminator and gubernuts to get in and nobody would guess that ever and so the next line since we established what the form fields are coming in as what the user put in and then we established what the correct ones are here we can do comparison and that's what this if statement does here if the username is not equal admin so that means if this variable and this variable do not match and if the password does not equal admin pass that means if the password variable here that they put in does not mas match the password variable that is in our official admin that's our official admin password then they get this error message the login information is incorrect but if they happen to put the correct admin information in then we use session register a uh, a variable of admin and then we set that session admin variable to have a value of username which is the terminator if they get everything correct so the session variable be admin becomes or has a value of term the terminator and then we just uh, throw in the require once and index.php that's the admin center index and then we exit the script 
so all they see is voila if they get things right so it's really <laughs> the most basic login all really compact and basic uh, and you would use MySQL if you wanted to really get it official and have the the uh, client be able to change their password and stuff like that if they if you wanted a system like that but this is good enough nobody can see your PHP scripting and correct me if I'm wrong guys but I don't think you guys can go onto my servers in any way or onto my sites and see my PHP scripts but correct me if I'm wrong uh, so I think this is a very secure way to do it for a basic system okay now in part 7 all we have to do is since we're sitting here looking at the admin control center and I already have some little forms in here one for create new page and one for edit existing page and they just place the ID of the page they want to edit right there so all we need is two more forms or two more scripts and then we're done so I would think in part 7 we would do create new page form in part 8 edit existing page and then we're done and I'll show you where the good WYSIWYGs are, the good uh, HTML, not HTML, but the what you see is what you get editors that people use for populating or formatting text and adding images when they don't know HTML 